Hi, my name is Alice Macharia and I'm Program Director with the Africa Programs at the Jane Goodall Institute and I focus on our programs in East Africa which cover Tanzania, Uganda and Eastern DRC. Within the Africa programs, we've used community mapping in a number of different scenarios. Uh, through land use planning in Tanzania, we sit down with communities, we talk with them, and we go through a process of gathering information of how their villages are structured, what kind of resources are there. And so in some instances, we actually sit, they draw, they actually draw the village on the ground, and they mark the boundaries, they mark different resources with different tools that they collect from the ground. So for example, a forest could be shown as green leaves, you could have water that's shown you know, through a diagram, you could have cows or other places where they keep um, their animals with little stones. And so we go through a process where they use local materials to basically show us what you know what their village looks like and then on top of that they're also able to share stories so it's an element of showing what the village looks like now but then stories in terms of space and time so how did the forest that's there end up being where it is is it you know because people use it as a sacred place they go there to pray or do they leave it as a watershed area and so we're able to not only just gather information on what it looks like but then also the temporal and cultural elements of, um, of the village. And then we've also used high resolution imagery to really work with the communities where they're able to actually see specific resources on the ground. They'll see maybe an area that they go to to collect water, a forest that they go to collect firewood, roads that they use, the paths that they take, the paths that the, village, the, the students take when they're going to school. And so it's a really good way of getting information and sharing information to, to bring it up to a much larger scale. Because then we do this village by village, and so you're able to get a much more broader um, map of what's happening within the communities uh, near a protected area. So using the community mapping process, the Jane Goodall Institute has been able to facilitate land use planning processes within villages in Western Tanzania. So currently we've been able to use the technology as well as the community mapping process to really enable over 30 villages to actually get them their villages certified with land use plans. And so Tanzania has a process where each village is supposed to develop a land use plan and it's almost like getting a title deed or recognition at the ministerial level that their village actually exists and this is a you know a printout of exactly what they look like. And so we've worked with over 30 villages they've been able to to get the village land use plan certified at the national level. And we've also been able to ensure that the, with these villages, they've been able to create a corridor that's right next to Gombe National Park that's been set aside as village forest reserves. So these are their own forests, but they act as a boundary or a buffer to a protected area. So, so it's, a, you know, it's, it's, it's beneficial to both entities where we've been able to, to work with the communities, they've been able to get their, their villages mapped, planned, using a government process, but on the other hand, to also lead to much more long-term conservation benefits. But then the next step was, okay, how do they ensure that those forests are actually protected and they're preserved and that there's no encroachment? And so we've been able to work with the communities, they've been able to um, identify forest monitors, so they're, they're based in the village, we've trained them on how to use you know, Google Android phones, they know how to go out and use GPS points, so they go into the forest, they monitor them, they collect GPS points every, I can't remember, maybe 20 minutes of exactly what they're doing every 20 minutes. If they see, for example, someone has cut a tree for firewood, they'll take a picture, they'll record the, um, the, the locations of exactly where this is happening and report back to the village government. In some instances, when they're patrolling, they actually find people in the forest doing things that they shouldn't be. And so, you know, they don't have the authority to necessarily arrest them, but again, they can report that back to the village government and the village government can take the necessary steps to make sure that those people are either penalized or um, or whatever they've taken from the forest uh, given back to the community. So I think being able to really use this tool and to that leads to an actionable item on the ground is extremely beneficial. And for the people on the ground to be able to use this kind of information for decision making is even much better because that way they'll be able to make sure we'll be able to make sure that those that information and whatever they're doing is sustained into the future. So so capacity building and making sure that people are, are using the tools necessary for management is is more than we can expect. This is a tool that we're not only using in Africa, but then we'd recommend that should be used across 
JGI and not only within JGI but then through all the youth around the world to be able to map their own resources, their own communities and to be able to make a difference and identify actionable items that they can do and take to be able to make a difference within um, things that they notice within their communities that need to be changed, need to be upgraded, need to be monitored or just need to be enhanced or maintained as they are. So I think this is an incredible tool that can be used all levels for decision making.